Bless the name of the Lord. Thank you again for joining us. Amen. Amen. This is Pastor Joseph Israel and I'm with my beloved wife. Amen. Michelle. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. Oof, it's always good to find ourselves right here again one more time. This is what's on your mind, our Wednesday um, uh, weekly uh, but we haven't been, uh, you know, we haven't been for quite a while. We haven't been able to um, 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 broadcast, but everything is good. And we see the, the Lord has been blessing us and helping us to keep on going. Even through our mountains and forests and every path, He helped us to keep on going. This is the most important. So I just wanted to say thank you to all of you, um, where you are right now, whether you um, from um, um, I mean, whether you connect yourself from uh, Africa, from uh, Europe, from uh, uh, United States, whatever you at right now, we say hello. We thank you for joining us tonight. Hi, and we want to say we hope everyone have a great Thanksgiving. We know that is here, and it, everything to be grateful for. Um, a lot of things have have you know happened throughout the year, but every day we are to give thanksgiving and praise to God. So. Even we've had stuff kind of around happen and things, but you have to stay focused on God and, and not let the things around um, take away your gratefulness for the season. I know a lot of people have family and friends coming in for the holiday. They're coming to eat. And, and I heard them say on the radio, on, on one of the Christian stations I listened to, they were saying, oh, this is a time for like stress and people are really stressed out. But we have to remember, being thankful is not a reason to get stressed out. If things don't go the way you, you plan for them to go, like you maybe you cooked something and it didn't work out, or, you know, with everything that's happening, that's not a reason to let the holidays stress you out. You already know it's going to be traffic. Don't let that stress you out. You just remember to be grateful and thankful for what God has done. I know some people... Um, you know, or going through things. They just recently had a surgery, but amen, you're still alive. You're still here for God to use you. You know, some of you are still, you're going through some pain issues. It could be um, emotional pain from a lost, lost loved one at this time, but we know that you are here. You are to keep going for God. You are to keep focusing on the things you're thankful for. Yes, you, you miss the loved one that's not here, but you know that we all have have time here on this earth and we're to use it wisely so to use it wisely let's still be thankful be grateful to god you know just amen <laughs> <laughs> amen amen, amen. be thankful and grateful to god this is the most important mm -hmm. uh yeah i mean god um keep us amen he keeps us throughout all throughout every season and this is really important to, to to thank him for all he's done for our children, for our uh, spouses, for uh, our health, for all that he's done. Even thank you, you know, thank him for, even for the trial, you know. I, I know that the trial most of the time are not the way we want them to happen. We don't like them. We don't um, uh, see sometimes the purpose of it. But... Even for the trial, we have to be thankful because because of the trial, we get promoted, we we, we get advanced, we we get like uh, to the new you know new level. So thank you for all of it, amen. So today we had a uh, we had a topic, amen. Husband and wife, the do's and the don'ts, amen. And and I would like all of you to participate as you are where you at to participate and then to tell us what's your what's what's in your mind what do you think and what was the lord is telling you or what do you think simply to participate amen and then again you can uh, uh, either call on um, the cell phone which is uh, on the screen on uh, the 470-315-2356 or you can uh, text uh, to the same uh, cell phone uh, 470-315-2356 or leave a comment and participate it would be good to interact with you and those who of you who won't see this now and see after still good amen see after let's say throughout the time as you're watching it later on well let the lord minister on to you and then if as you're watching and you uh, later to 
uh, uh, ask a question even as you're watching it after grab your phone and send a text concerning uh, you know uh, related to what you're watching and then we will also go inside whether it, on inside that God is giving you to let us know whatever amen it is for the glory of God amen amen so uh, the do and the don't ah, Jesus Th this is a topic <laughs> <laughs> Uh, have you ever been in a, in a, in in instance where they tell you what you have to do and what you can't do, what you allowed to do and what what you're not allowed to do? Uh, can can we actually say that uh, in a marriage can we have do and don'ts? Hmm, that's a good question. Uh, to have do's and don'ts in marriage, I think there's some. To say do's and don'ts, uh, I don't know. But to say um, make wise decisions and put pause in places, I don't know. That's, that's more <laughs> what, <laughs> what I was saying. <laughs> Use pause buttons. <laughs> they're, 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 um, you know, one side you could say there's do's and don'ts, but on another side, this is, is a person that you're growing with, you're spending time with. You're going to be with forever um, when you know that God has put you together. Despite the different things that happen, you know, we all know the scripture, what God put together, let no man. Um, put us under. Right, amen. So we all know that scripture. So when you know God has put you together, you're, you you know, despite what happens, you're, you're not getting a divorce. You're not going to separate and you have to work through your problems. So... Our, our issues, our complications, our disagreements, um, however you call it. So there's things that you do and there's things that there's a way to go around of, of not doing. Because to say not do something, throughout marriage and, and months and years together, there's going to be stuff you, you do that you already knew you shouldn't have done or... Or, you know, you do things and then you look back and go, why did I do that? So, <laughs> so I would say, pause button. <laughs> well, that's what you say, the pause button. But here's the thing. The, the marriage, I believe, amen, the marriage, I believe, comes more out of uh, the intent of God, the intention of God to man, than our view of what we can or should not do um, marriage is more as i said more of god saying this is what you can do in marriage this is what you don't so when we say the do and the don't um on the standpoint of her uh, the spiritual standpoint or biblical standpoint that's what we really um what we actually are referring to we're referring to to what god is saying in the marriage which is allowable and what what which is not allowable for example uh god speaks about the fact that uh uh, uh, uh the do is uh, to respect your husband the do is to love your wife that's the do and the don't is to uh, mistreat your wife or to mistreat your husband that's the don't uh, uh the do is, is to uh, um, uh help each other the don't is, is to gossip on each other or you know stuff like that in marriage we have do and don't but before even to get in that deep or in that um, side of a biblical principle, we, we most of the time have what we hear around, you know, what we hear around, uh, around us, um, what we see sometimes in other marriages. And then the most difficult things is how to adjust your marriage or how to adjust your relationship based on what you see around. Or should I say, can you adapt your, rela your relationship based on what you see around or should you adapt your relationship only based on the word of god this is two things that we want to dig into it because on one side there is a reality of what's going around there is a reality of relationship or marriages that you have seen around through your family through your parents through your uh, uh, uncles through your friends you know and then there are realities which are actually uh, what you live inside your own marriage so my 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 thought is can we adapt our marriage or should we adapt our marriage based on what we see around or should we adapt our marriage based on the word of god what do you think so um with marriage we we all despite like for us we come from different 
different um, cultures and backgrounds, but it's not just us. Even if you grow up in the same, let's say, like I'm originally from North Carolina, if two people even from the Carolinas get together, you have different backgrounds, different cultures in the way you grew up. You have different belief systems that kind of get involved even when you grow up, you know, in the church. Some people grow up in the church and and I say grow up in the church because you can grow up in church. That don't mean you paid attention to what the word was being said in church. So when you have two different people coming together, you're going to have differences. So what you have to do and base everything on is the word of God. Because if you base it on your circumstances or what you saw growing up or what you heard growing up or like a lot of of females that I know um, that I spoke to and, and including myself when I used to look at marriage, you base things on what you've seen on TV. Because when you you stray away from the word of God and you start relying to things that you've seen on movies or TV, they don't show you all the things of how to work out a situation because they're showing you things from worldly point of views. They're not showing you things from biblical point of view. So it's very important to use the Bible as your guidance on what you should and should not do, do or do not do. Because if you base it on, well, this is what I thought, this is what my mind tells me, this is what I think you should do, you have the woman, the wife, this is what should happen and you have the husband this is what should happen and you're not always going to agree or see eye to eye on things so your number one focus your number one standard has to be the bible and the word of god it it can't even just be focused on this is what i saw with my my sister at church and, and my sister marriage at church and when i say sister i don't mean blood sister or blood brother i mean even in christ you have to base it on the word of god because everyone's situation could be different so you don't want to go by people's opinions and circumstances you want to go by the word of god and how the spirit leads you amen well th this is interesting because well but I, I can even go further saying that um we can actually use what we see around to adjust our marriage in the sense of uh, uh, wisdom not in the sense of implementation mm. um, mm -hmm. um, what happened to other people whether bad or good are always source for wisdom mm, that's true Amen. Mm -hmm. So Amen. what we see around if for example we see around people who don't have Christ in their lives and then they're fighting all time, all time, and they finally, um, um, you know, have each other uh, to the point of hatred. We see that maybe the lack is a uh, 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 Christ in the midst. Mm -hmm. So this it becomes a wisdom to know how to be equally yoked in the Lord. Mm -hmm. So you know, or you can see some believers who actually do have Christ, but they don't know how to submit to the Lord. And then that also can become a wisdom to know, okay, if you don't submit to the Lord, this is how this can happen and this can happen. Mm -hmm. And you can also have other instances, for example, where people do have Christ, they know how to submit to the Lord, but they don't know how to implement what God is saying in the basic, in the basis, mm -hmm. in the daily, the, the, daily basis. Mm -hmm. Because one thing is what you hear from the Lord, and another thing is how you implement it. Mm -hmm. How you put it in practice? Mm -hmm. God says, "Okay, respect your husband." Okay, what does it mean exactly? Mm -hmm. When you respect your husband, how you respect your husband? Mm -hmm. You go say, "Love your wife." Okay, what's the meaning of it? Mm -hmm. What is love your wife? Uh, uh, when you love your wife, uh, where you love your wife? Uh, is it holding the hand of your wife? Is loving your wife? Is it telling her, "I love you," loving your wife? Uh, what what it is? Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true because we can know even not in marriage, like if some of you are not in marriage, even not in marriage, you can still know the Word of God, but to put it in practice and use it is what we have to do. Amen. And then this is where the thing comes in because you know the Word of God, you have heard the Word of God, mm -hmm. you will live by the Word of God, but how to put it in practice, mm -hmm. how to really make it work. Mm -hmm. That's where the workout comes in. Mm -hmm. And then the workout comes in based on what you have as an experience, based on discernment. Because what I believe is that uh, if there is something that we must do in marriage, first, for, uh, first and foremost, 
first and foremost it never okay um, what we should do is never to look and to compare our marriage to other people marriage mm -hmm. we shouldn't do it mm -hmm. uh, we can draw wisdom from what people do and people don't do to understand what we can avoid because mm -hmm. the scripture speak about the fact that uh, the word of god is given for instruction in righteousness and the same thing uh, uh, or for doctrine so we can use the word of god uh, we can use other uh, other marriages around uh, as a uh, as a focal point or as a mirror mm -hmm. of what can happen when a husband and wife are not under the same anointing or under the same hand of god mm -hmm. what can happen when they are still under the same hand of god and yet they don't know how to apply it what what can happen so 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 and forth so my thing i believe is that people uh, in marriages we should more be willing to look other people marriages and see through it the lessons mm. not to take and to live by or not to take and to mm. to okay. um, uh, compare yeah. mm -hmm. but to see as a mirror of what mistake they may have done mm. that brought the disaster because there is a path way for divorce there is a path way for conflict there is a path way for uh, uh, hurt there is a pathway for all there is a pathway also for blessing there is a pathway for understanding there is a, there is a pathway for for love so it is not our source of inspiration uh, and source of inspiration first but it can be a source of understanding and wisdom and that's the first level before to be spiritual we're human and then most of the time we take away the human part and we want to be spiritual in the marriage. Well, guess what? If you and your husband you in the room and both are too spiritual, the baby you have inside will die. <laughs> <laughs> the baby will die. Because you both are so spiritual that nobody even think of caring about the baby which is still on the human part care. You know what I'm saying? My point is yeah the god can send the angel but what he gives unto us is that we have to take care both of the physical and the spiritual that's why we both physical and spiritual for example uh, god can do an exception to some people but the exception that he gives to some marriages are not the rule and the principle for us to rule our marriage i give an example for example in the case of mary the exception that was that she has not uh, uh, known a man and she gave birth. Mm -hmm. That was an exception, but that's not the rule. The rule is that a woman and a man has to go together to give a child. So the exception that she has is not the rule or the principle for everybody. Mm -hmm. So someone in the marriage cannot say, okay, I love you, you love me, but you know what? You sleep over there, I sleep over here. Mm -hmm. Or I love you, you love me, we spiritual, but you know what, when it comes to finances, this is your finances, this is my finances. Or, I love you, okay, you love me, I respect you, you respect me. But you know what, we're so spiritual. So, stuff like that sometimes mm -hmm. can uh, uh, bring issues. Um, in a case of some marriages, God can speak to the husband or speak to the wife concerning something that they have to fix or they have to further or they have to improve. But... God also speaks through the mouth of your spouse. Mm -hmm. So it is good to listen to your spouse. It is good to listen what your spouse has to say. Because I, I sometimes find it difficult uh, when you, you sit in the same room with your spouse, but you don't know what to say. Mm -hmm. It, it, it yeah. is a difficult thing. Mm -hmm. you, you don't know what to say, or you sit in the same room with your spouse. You, there is no communication, not because you don't want to talk with the person, but it can be a, a, a kind of a, a, a prejudgment of something that happened before that pulls the people to, uh, to prevent themselves to engage in communication. Because something that happened before in certain marriages make people 
to be afraid of whatever can happen if they're involved in the same path. Happened before as in um as in previous previous like before marriage either, or happened either, before in either, the marriage. Both either okay. previous in previous marriage mm -hmm. or in the marriage. Mm -hmm. Action happened or situation or conflict or whatever that has been before the marriage mm -hmm. or in the marriage. Mm -hmm. Both of them can be a wall mm -hmm. of Jericho that is dressing up against mm -hmm. both uh, spouses. Mm -hmm. uh, I was I was saying from lo the Lord was teaching me concerning the wall of Jericho that was dressing in marriages. Mm -hmm. And then he was saying that what we don't understand is that the beginning of every marriage is receive the manner. Mm -hmm. The manner that's when you have uh, done everything to be together you have had your wedding and then now you have your honeymoon and then you're laughing here and there okay but that's three two reality of human being who's coming together to be a spiritual being mm -hmm. it amen to be one to be one uh -huh. that, that's uh -huh. the purpose to be one so two human being with two reality of two attitude and character of way of thinking mm -hmm. for them to have the oneness that God has intended for them it demands work mm -hmm. it demands work and prayer mm -hmm. the problem is we pray but we don't put it at work <laughs> so you pray 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 <laughs> 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 and no work 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 mm -hmm. so this can become the source of frustration mm -hmm. can become the source of conflict can become the source of difficulties and what i believe is also that in every marriage is god give us god gives us um uh, um uh, like area to possess mm -hmm. to uh, uh to to acquire to 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 to, to take amen so uh, the, the the area of her understanding of uh, uh, communication, the area of her finances, the area of her togetherness, the area of prayer. The uh, so there there are different areas. The area of her training the children, uh, uh, the area of her uh, being together. All those area are one after the other that we have to possess. Now the problem in some marriages is that while we were working on the area B. Somebody goes all the way back to the area A. When the other spouse is ready to go to the area C. So when two spouses comes from the area B, they work it out. And now they have they had an adjustment. And they are ready to go to the B. They go both together to the B. So, give an example, maybe. Oh, uh, well, yeah, you yeah, know. Nah, like, nah, like nah, are nah. you saying, like, one person is working maybe mm -hmm. towards finances, where the other person is working towards communication, well, and then they're not coming together on that, or... Okay, let, let's say this. Two people in the marriage, the husband and the wife don't know how to communicate. Mm -hmm. That is the, area, the first area, for example, area A. And now they learn how to communicate, and then... The husband understand that when the wife is sitting and has her hand this way, that's the best communication that says, honey, I'm so tired, I just need a massage. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so the communication of her, the gesture or the communication of her, uh, uh, the body language mm -hmm. or whatever. So they learn each other to know when to play with the other, when to interact with the other spouse and when to leave the other spouse. For example, in some marriages, when the husband is sleepy, don't touch him. Or when the wife is sleepy, don't bother her. Mm -hmm. So stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That's a communication that they learn. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now, that's the first step that they have uh, gained mm -hmm. or the first field or area. Mm -hmm. Now they're ready to go in the step B. The step B can be the step of prayer mm -hmm. or the step of training the children mm -hmm. where they learn how to train the children okay uh, we have to agree that if uh, the child does this and then uh, you and I have to be together for the sake of the child the child shouldn't play us together 
some children do know how to play the parents yeah. so stuff like that mm -hmm. now after that they're ready to go to the step c which is okay now let's see in the finances how we made a budget how we do this how we do this so while they're ready to go to the step c mm -hmm. here comes that one of the spouse go all the way to the step a which is communication mm -hmm. which is messing everything concerning communication mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. now the other spouse now has to go also back trying to figure out what's going on mm -hmm. and then the communication that was supposed to be fixed mm -hmm. becomes the stumbling block mm -hmm. and then you have again to start over mm -hmm. so when you were supposed to attain or when you were supposed to reach a certain level of uh, un unity, uh, 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 unity uh, and then unification, mm -hmm. um, you will find yourself that some part of your marriage are left aside because the other one didn't play his part mm -hmm. or play her part. Mm -hmm. Which part? When I know that my spouse knows that she does not like this or more my husband does not like this well this has to be a settled case to be able not to do the same thing over and over mm -hmm. because doing the same thing on and over and over we bring you back to the point a when you could have been able to go further to the point d e c and further on mm -hmm. it does not mean that people cannot make mistake Mm -hmm. No, it, it does not mean that the husband shouldn't be allowed to make a mistake or the wife couldn't be allowed to make mm -hmm. a mistake. No, uh, they, they have to be allowed to make a mistake. Because if in your marriage you don't make mistake, then you're no longer a human being, you're a machine. Mm -hmm. And how do, do um, married couples come together when it's a situation that maybe they don't agree on? What's well uh, so that they so that one doesn't feel like i'm trying to advance this part of the marriage and and i feel like this person is not catching up or so to speak like play catch up or whatever so when it's maybe an issue that um they don't agree on how is a way to using the scripture get past that and and work through that well um even before to get to the scripture, I was trying to establish the day-to-day uh, -day life as human beings. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because uh, what we do is, uh, we want to cover what we do wrong with the scripture. Mm -hmm. Or we want to say, I leave it in the hand of God, when you're the one who did the, the thing. Mm -hmm. Before to live in the hand of God, you got to fix the wrong that you did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And fix the wrong that you did, can be by adjusting yourself on how to react, on how to talk, on how to explain and stuff like that. But there are times when the spouses are are are, are, are not are, don't have the intention to hurt the other, mm -hmm. but the way that they respond uh, uh, display itself uh, like a uh, conflicting or displays a uh, an adverse action an adverse reaction mm -hmm. now the other spouse has to be able to read through it to see okay is she trying to be against me or is she trying to be he she uh he's he she <laughs> he, he or she <laughs> he sha she sha 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 mm -hmm. <laughs> okay he or her mm -hmm. uh, are they trying to be against one of the, uh, the spouse against me or not so you have to be able to pass through it. Now, when after working on the physical, on the emotional, on the mental, when you have set it up, this is the little things. When you set it up, this is very little because this is where you can easily say, okay, this chair over there shouldn't be over there. All you do is to take it to put it here. That's all. <laughs> he doesn't take prayer for that. Mm -hmm. He takes simple action. Mm -hmm. But what we do, okay, this chair over there, I don't like it to be there. We agree it shouldn't be over there, but it's always over there. That's a problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or the big thing that I hear even um, at work today, <laughs> at work today, the toilet seat being left up. Yes, That's stuff like, like a that. big thing. Oh, the toilet seat left up. So then 
when the, the 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 wife goes in and see the toilet seat up now that becomes a big issue and why you can't put the seat down and this goes on for so uh, we just yeah. wanted to say hi thank you to uh, sister carol um uh, uh also to uh jd and also to uh, ari green we want to yeah. thank you already amen for all of you watching we want to thank you and also please and uh, leave us a comment to just uh uh, um, say that uh, you also uh, um, watching or you know happy here. I mean, glad to be in our in our in our fellowship fellowship with us. We are glad to see you. This is always uh, good for us to see that people are responding. So we want also you know a man to interact with you. So just leave a comment for whatever comment you have. So to come back to what you said before to get into the what the Bible says, get and fix into what you can do with your hands mm -hmm. they are simple things that you can do with your hands mm -hmm. now when we come to deep stuff um, when we come to biblical stuff or when we come to as she said and uh, the disagreement you have to go to the bible with this mind let's say before to disagree over something or before to uh, be, before to to say that you don't agree over something both together, you have eventually to know what is the norm. So that's when you come in the Bible. Mm -hmm. What does the Lord say concerning that? Mm -hmm. Before to disagree. Mm -hmm. If the Lord says, for example, um, let's say, He says, husband, uh, be gentle or uh, um, uh, 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 be gentle with your uh, um, wife, or be uh, be considerate with your wives, and the husband is not considered with the hus uh, with the wife, and then uh, I was about to say husband. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we, that's no homosexuality. <laughs> it's oh, real no. marriage, no homosexuality. Husband and wife, one woman, one man, not one man and one man or one woman, one man. No, right. no. One man and one woman. We're talking about real marriage from God, not uh, those uh, sitting around and, and mm -hmm. stuff. Anyway, so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> who can see that so when the both cannot agree on something they have to find what is the norm the spiritual norm what is the lord saying concerning it there is always no matter what it is there is always something that god has to say concerning whatever they don't agree over to help them agree with the lord when you don't agree over something, you have to seek what is the norm in that thing to be able to agree with the Lord. Mm -hmm. The more you agree with the Lord, the more both of you will be able to agree. Mm -hmm. So as I was saying, an example, the scripture speaks about the fact that the husband has to be considerate with, the, with his wife, mm -hmm. to treat her with honor. If the husband does not do so, and the uh, wife is not happier concerning it, and then he brings an uh, 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 issue, and then the husband says, why, why don't you do this? And then she says, well, you could have done this. Well, Bob has to now to find who is supposed to do the first step, mm -hmm. to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. According to the Bible, the one who's supposed to do the first step is, the B Bible says, if your, 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 your brother has offended you, and he comes, and repent you forgive mm -hmm. that's the first step so the other one has to come and repent mm -hmm. now if the other one did not come to repent because the other one does not recognize his or her fault then you have to go to the second step of the second principle of what god says mm -hmm. humble yourself mm -hmm. amen so humble yourself and be peacemaker Mm -hmm. So the husband should look into the situation to know to be a peacemaker, to come and to finally find how to agree with the Lord by being a peacemaker, and then come down to what was done wrong concerning the mistreatment or concerning the wrong that he did to his wife, to understand how to fix it. Mm -hmm. So by agreeing with the Lord being a peacemaker, he comes to the fact that that he didn't do something right towards his spouse mm -hmm. and the both now discuss about it 
and now he's willing to do the right thing or she's willing to do the right thing so maybe this example is not really uh, precise well but what i'm saying is disagreement can happen only because when both spouses don't see the the, the interest of god mm -hmm. in the marriage the first interest is of god mm -hmm. what do you do what you do for what do you do what what, what you want what, what what do you do what you actually doing is this because you want to please your husband please your wife or you do so to please god so the first interest should be god and then when you please god then whatever pleases god will please your husband or your spouse mm -hmm. if both eventually are in the understanding of the ways of the lord mm -hmm. now as uh, um, can we say that um, 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 uh, this will be an easy thing no that's why uh, the, the marriage is a promised land as i said there is the manner that god gives in the beginning of every marriage mm -hmm. to sustain you amen uh, for you to go further so he gives you the bread he, he gives you the water for you to go on the journey but it happens that on the 40 journey you won't have anything to eat anything to drink that would be the drop that would be the time of trial Trials. that would be the time of trial but in the time of trial is only to remove all those things because if you don't have trial how do you know what's wrong yeah how do you know what's to fix mm -hmm. so to pretend that nothing goes wrong to pretend that you're not uh 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 uh, uh, uh upset about something to pretend that well this is not a big deal is only uh to create like a kind of bomb right that it's will like layer of layer, layer of layer of mm -hmm. layer mm -hmm. so instead of pretending be real mm -hmm. but when you real you have to keep in mind that be real does not mean be arrogant mm -hmm. or, or, be, or to yell or to or yell or, stuff like that or to yeah bring up stuff that's mm -hmm. this irrelevant just to to right to um, see what is right. the mm -hmm. the way out mm -hmm. so this is important now there is something and when I, I would probably speak about uh, uh, men of God and women of God, there is something that sometimes on the do, the husband in the marriage, if he is a man of God, the wife has to understand that that person is first a husband in the marriage. And secondly, a man of God. Mm -hmm. in the marriage mm -hmm. in the marriage the husband who is a man of God is first a husband mm -hmm. and then a man of God mm -hmm. the wife who is the woman of God in the marriage she is first a wife mm -hmm. and then a woman of God you know what I'm saying <laughs> <laughs> okay I, 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 I will further it. Yes. Let's say you might be both in the ministry. And then it happens that you have to do something. When your spouse will ask you to do something for the ministry, you have to respond to your spouse because it is your spouse asking you first unless your spouse tells you this is what god said okay amen amen so you have to use the spouse attitude from the husband which is love from the spouse from the wife which is respect you have to use those two elements of love and respect to respond to each other mm -hmm. amen mm -hmm. so that's us husband and wife mm -hmm. now when after you respond to each other you have to realize that the one that you have is somebody who is anointed by god so you can play with your wife as an anointed woman of god mm -hmm. for example uh, uh, i'm talking about a specific but this comes also to all uh, 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 all 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 kind of marriage 
Uh, I'm talking about ministry um, people or ministry uh, marriage who do have ministry, but even marriage who don't have ministry. Um, when I speak about ministry, I'm talking about the minister of the evangelist or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But although they may not have those specific ministry, yet they do have the ministry of the marriage itself. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So we have to understand that the husband or the wife, if they're serving the Lord as anointed of the Lord, they are not uh, uh, the pastor of the wife in the marriage. Mm -hmm. They are not the pastor of the husband in the marriage. Mm -hmm. They are husband and wife first. Mm -hmm. Now, the husband can go to the wife if, you see, we have to be able to see when to speak to the husband as a husband mm -hmm. or a pastor. Mm -hmm. Speak to the wife as a wife or a pastor. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But we have to keep in mind that for whatever we do towards those people, we do so because we want to please God and we want to do the will of God. And the will of God is what he says inside the word. Mm -hmm. Now, how to apply respect? What does it mean to respect? your husband what does it mean to love how to apply it mm -hmm. well this comes with preferences mm -hmm. the guideline is to respect your husband mm -hmm. to love your wife that's the guideline of the scripture mm -hmm. inside of how you apply he might be based on your preferences mm -hmm. preferences which are noble preferences which are pure preferences which are a good, good report. Mm -hmm. For example, um, and by loving your wife, you can, for example, f f uh, let's say your, your wife doesn't like to eat uh, 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 something, whatever it is. And then, because you love your wife, you won't go to the grocery and buy what she does not like to eat. Mm -hmm. You see know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. This is something. Uh, you cannot buy and have her eat anyway because you want to show her the love. No, that's that's a weird love. Right, like you you know your wife doesn't like something, but you go buy it, cook it, and then become offended because she doesn't. She eat doesn't it, eat it, but you know she doesn't like it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then you say, no, well, that's because I love you. I did it and I bought it. Well, the first love was not to buy because she doesn't like it. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want her to discover steel whatever you want her to discover though she doesn't like it then buy what she does like mm -hmm. buy what she doesn't like mm -hmm. and then do what she does like and do what she doesn't like and then propose her a piece of what she doesn't like she may like it mm -hmm. but if you force her to give only one choice of what she doesn't like well this might not be the expression of love mm -hmm. amen mm -hmm. so how to apply love will be on how the preferences goes within the marriage. Mm -hmm. And I say those preferences has to be noble, mm -hmm. has to be decent, mm -hmm. has to be of good report, has to be godly. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, uh, when you don't like something, you tell to your wife, well, you see, I don't like this. Uh, or you tell to your husband, I don't like this. But is this what the person doesn't like is godly for example the husband can say i don't like to pray that's not godly mm -hmm. i don't like to go to church that's not godly mm -hmm. the husband can say oh i like to drink that's not godly right mm -hmm. so i'm talking about the things which are godly but sometimes you may have i, I the husband can say i do like to go to church but i do not like to go to church at 9 p.m mm -hmm. And then the wife can say, well, I do like to go to church, but I do not like to go to church at 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. So the husband wants to go to the church of 10 a.m., but the wife wants to go to the church of 9 p.m. Mm -hmm. Both do like to go to church, mm -hmm. but there is a conflict right here. Right. Mm -hmm. So how do they come to agree on this? Mm -hmm. First, they have to, to be able to look into the preferences and see what is allowable, what is godly, what is right to do. Mm -hmm. So the first thing can be, okay, who's going to be the first one to sacrifice the 9 p.m. or the 10 a.m.? Mm -hmm. Who has to do the first step? He's the one who's really close to God. Mm -hmm. 
If the husband is the one close to God, he will sacrifice the 9 p.m. and go to the 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. Oh, I did I say 10 a.m.? He, he did. He go to, yeah. But he, did. he would go to the 9 p.m. Yeah. And, and instead of oh, the yeah. 10 a.m. But because he likes to go to the mm -hmm. 10 a.m. So, he will go to the 9 p.m. instead of the 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. If he is the one who who is closer to God. Mm -hmm. When I say closer to God, I mean the one who heard from God saying, go do the peace. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Or the wife, if she's the one closer, she will do the same thing. Mm -hmm. One has to do the first step to sacrifice something. Mm -hmm. And once they went both together to please or to uh, adjust the preferences, then they can come and say, you know what? Let's try to go to the 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. But you can do something before to ask to the other one to do what you want. Mm -hmm. So, when there is something that is in marriage, the do and the don't, I believe, I believe it's really, uh, uh, really, uh, it's really uh, um, uh, vast, a vast uh, topic. Uh, 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 yes, there are do. Yes, they are don't, mm -hmm. but not according to what we see, but according to the word of God. Mm -hmm. The do, as the husband, you cannot treat your wife like a, a piece of uh, uh, a cloth or a piece of uh, 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 trash, and in the same time, go to pray for the Lord to bless you. It won't happen. Mm -hmm. Because that's what he said. Mm -hmm. That's the principle. Mm -hmm. The wife cannot keep her the respect in the husband, and then wonder why is the husband is yelling on her. Well, you respect the husband. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So, but both still, as children of God, has to come to a point where they have to listen what the Spirit says to come back to make peace, mm -hmm. to be peacemaker. I think, and, and a good um, thing to bring up too, as you was doing the teaching like a week ago mm -hmm. about the Jericho of marriage mm -hmm. and that a lot of times people will pray and they will pray to God about what they want instead mm -hmm. of God interest in their marriage mm -hmm. and and that's something that I think we should remember too mm -hmm. is that it's not God is for your husband God is for your wife God is for your marriage together Amen. so if there's there's a problem in the marriage it's not like oh lord fix him fix him it's him 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 god's not going to be for you over your husband or for your husband over the wife he's going to be for his interest for his interest for his glory and to help the marriage for the glory for what he has in store and the plans he has for Amen. the marriage not for one person so it's important when we are praying and and seeking grace in a marriage that you're not seeking for your interest but you're seeking for God's interest in a marriage and and that will help direct the path when it comes to disagreements or, or preferences in the marriage amen amen definitely so I do believe that uh, um, <laughs> can we actually say well um, we can uh, um, have a marriage without fight when i say fight i ain't talking about fight <laughs> uh, yeah it's a disagreement okay mm -hmm. conflict can we have that kind of marriage yes can two people have a marriage conflict free yes but before to go over there they have to possess all the area of the marriage so that's when you're still working through the man exactly as you and then get exactly. to the milk and the honey. Exactly. So, God gives milk and honey in the promised land of the marriage. But before to get there, you will have to fight until then. <laughs> <laughs> but while you're fighting, it's not fighting, you know, you where you really like mean. In the, no, 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 you no, see no. Yelling a, and it, no. But uh, like um, disagreement. Disagreement or, where you don't understand why she's saying that. Why she she's saying that? Why why is, is he doing that? I don't understand. And, and then you're not really happy about that that choice, but you go along with that. But you're not really happy about mm -hmm. it. You know that's a kind of uh, you know fight and conflict disagreement. Mm -hmm. you, you don't really like it, and you want to say something, but uh, but so you neither get through all those things mm -hmm. until you get to the milk and honey. Mm -hmm. 
Amen? Amen. You will get to the milk and honey. And then God was telling me something. He was telling me that a man, a human being, a man for a human being, men or women, a human being man will have his, in his life 10 different levels of trial before to eat of the good of, of the good of the land uh, of the good mm -hmm. throughout those 10 different level of trial he will supply the manna mm -hmm. and supply the water mm -hmm. so you won't die mm -hmm. so you won't break down mm -hmm. but you will have to go through 10 different level of trial until you get to the fullness of what you're supposed to possess mm. so when he was ex teaching when, when he was teaching me and revealing me uh, uh, that a man a human being has 10 different level for trial i understood and i asked him which level i am at <laughs> 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 Amen. <laughs> so the question is uh, if I ask you which level of trial are you at? <laughs> Maybe you are the 10. So praise the Lord, you're going to eat all fullness and goodness. But if you are the first boy, guard yourself. <laughs> and don't complain on the manna. <laughs> don't complain on the manna. That's the thing. We complain on the manna God is giving us. When it is supposed to keep us until the milk and the honey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if we understand that the manna that God is giving is to help us to fulfill and to have the strength to get to the milk and honey of the marriage, we won't be so disappointed or you won't, we won't be so discouraged. Mm -hmm. Amen? So, so instead of like, um, for example, instead of, the, the the complaining about mm -hmm. oh lord uh, why does she snore so much or, <laughs> or or why does he snore so much and 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 complaining about <laughs> the manna <laughs> yeah that's that's one thing that's one thing uh, excuse me i was saying that that oh jesus when your wife snores I don't think I snore so this ain't <laughs> she does <laughs> but I do <laughs> too so but when your wife snores this is an indication that God is helping you to get up to pray <laughs> amen <laughs> but if you are capable to sleep through snores through snoring then how will you be able to wake up <laughs> <laughs> to fight the battle yeah. amen mm. so that's what we wanted to say amen hallelujah <laughs> so to break that down a little further because that goes goes with um another topic when we was having the discussion when you know a lot of times there's different things that happen during marriage and instead of praying for god to give you the strength to to keep going or the grace to help you you know not look at that as uh, a negative point or something in the marriage so like if, for instance for the snoring oh lord why did you, you know you spend all this time you know you pray for a spouse you, lord send me a spouse and oh i love the spouse and blah 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 and now they snore and then it turns into now that person's sleeping you're looking at them like oh, 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 oh here we go snore again snore again and now you want to go sleep in a different room or go sleep on the couch and then not sleep instead of saying lord give me the grace you know you're you're awakened by that so you know use that as as prayer moment lord i know you put us together i know this is who you chose for me give me the the grace to sleep through it or give me the grace <laughs> not to be bothered or offended by the snoring that i want to now go sleep separately and be separately apart and open the door for the enemy to come in there and, and, and work <laughs> on the marriage because now you're not even want to be around that person you know that person is going to sleep and you're like i'm going in the other room so well, you see okay but it, as i was saying we have so many don't yeah. and do yeah. according to what the lord tells mm -hmm. us, according to the scripture uh the, the do is love your wife the do is respect your husband the do is humble yourself and the don't i eventually the don't so people has to be able to understand the difference of the do's and the difference of the don't 
based on what God is saying. Now, most of the time, it happens that some people compare the marriage, and then if the husband says, you know, look what you do, you're not like the wife of the other guy, that's wrong, that's simply wrong. Because the wife of the other guy maybe did something good only once, <laughs> but you don't know what she does every day. Amen? So, we shouldn't be comparing ourselves to any other marriage in the sense of uh, whether we higher or lower. No. We should be comparing ourselves to the scripture, to what God is saying in the word. Amen? Amen. Amen. And it's important not to compare past relationships to your present relationship. For instance, um, many people, if you, you, you know, you was in a long-term relationship before you got married or married before, and now you're in this one and you see someone do something, you don't go back and bring that into your marriage and say, oh, this person now is just like this other person because they're doing the same thing or this is, you know, the same response the other person did. No, each person is still an individual. So you have to, from the human side, up into like we said the spiritual side you have to look at the situation for what it is and not bring comparison mm -hmm. not only to the marriages for what you see but to other past previous relationships you have to leave that behind and not bring that into the current marriage that you're in now and compare Amen. that person to someone else or to another situation that happened with a previous person mm -hmm. because this is a new situation and a new person so don't look at this as mimicking amen amen uh, and one 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 thing i wanted to hide um we should avoid at all costs to bring or to allow our cost amen the cost of our marriage to be uh um performed to be breached like what i'm saying is we have to be able to keep out all the influences from outside for example you go to work and something happened to work uh, you can bring it maybe home concerning discussing it and then finding comfort with your spouse but you don't bring it at home and then you all mad to everybody at everybody upset at everybody no you, you can do stuff like that so the tiredness or the anger or the hunger also you know the hunger you were not able to eat all those things are for the workplace when you come home you come uh, to the uh, to the place of peace you have to come to the place of peace as a husband you have to come to the place of peace as a wife you have to come to the place of peace you have to be able to see your home as the sanctuary to refresh you so when you come home you can discuss about what happened at your work but not with the the you know you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Not with that attitude that brings you uh that brings your 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 anger from that work into your house, whatever it is, whether from uh, your uh 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 spouse or dad or I mean I'm talking about the uh um uh, uh, parents in law, brother in law, mm -hmm. friends, uh, uh even pastors or even in the church, sister, brethren. No, we shouldn't. We should be able to know that our marriage is honorable above all and if it's honorable the one who directed the marriage is god it does not mean that we don't listen to what people are saying when it comes to counseling or to advice or to recommendation you have to do you have to listen but what i'm saying is the purpose and the only uh, master of that marriage should be and must remain god Jesus Christ of Nazareth in that marriage if you want to have a healthier marriage then run to the Lord when something is not running right when you if you want to have a healthier marriage run to the Lord when you don't understand how to function with your wife when you don't understand how to function with your husband you see the Lord has the manual and uh, to how and and to how and when and, and what to do with your spouse so the do is to run to the Lord. The don't is to run to the people. When you gossip about your own marriage outside, that's a don't. It brings only dissension, contention, problem. And then, you know, one thing also that I wanted to add before we conclude, before we finish, is that when 
you are offended over something or when you frustrated over something that happened before to even go to look uh, uh, and whether you are the one right or wrong just go lay before the Lord and then ask him to show inside of you what is the thing that caused you to be offended and frustrated because you have to be able to uh, go over whatever frustrates you to have the peace of God to keep the peace of God but if that remove the peace of God then you go before the Lord asking him what is inside of you that calls whatever to make you frustrated and angry or upset because most of the time it is what is inside of us that calls the issue versus what somebody else did someone can do something wrong but inside of you can be the source of the problem itself so sometimes God can show you that to help you discover what you need to pray for to get out now we need in the marriage to come together under the end of God under the will of God seeking the will of God seeking what God wants us to do seeking what God has for the marriage we need to be able to have a vision for the marriage where are we going what are we doing uh, how are we doing it uh, we need to have the wisdom of God for the marriage we need to have the Spirit of God in the discernment in the marriage we shouldn't be afraid about everything I heard how some women they don't uh, they don't allow they don't like other women to come in the uh, uh, in the house to discuss with the husband or the husband don't like other men come in the house those kind of fear and then when you 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 live in suspicion that's not of God amen that's not of God so what we want to remember is to live in the peace of the Lord in the marriage and to run to the Lord when anything happen amen amen so amen. eventually this is not all this is part of it uh, um, you have more that the Lord has given unto you we would have love to have you share with us so um, 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 you may do it after um, or whatever but you know you're free to share with us what God has given unto you so this also can help other people the purpose is to help each other in the ways of the Lord I thank you and we thank you both of us to follow us to pray with us to support us and then to also be right there we pray for those who are watching after to receive the blessing of the Lord to receive the grace of God and to be empowered to go all the way to not the manna but to go all the way to the milk and the honey that God has for you Amen. Amen. We pray over you. Lord, we thank you for everyone watching now and after. Everyone, Father God, even if those who are not married, Lord, I pray and we pray for all of them, Father God. Those who are already married, even those, Father God, yeah. even the widow, Father God, we pray for all of them. We pray that your power, God, we keep them, Father God, throughout this time of Thanksgiving. Show them, Father God, what they can be thankful for in the marriage what they can be thankful for because there is always something that they can be thankful for lord those who are not married yet i pray lord that you will lead them to the one that you have father god for them as favor and grace i thank you for all of us for all of them in the name of jesus amen amen amen, amen. shalom Amen. Thank you.